because uh, I'm talking about HTTP interceptors. And um, the theme, uh, we're still with musicals, is uh, the great one, Hamilton. Uh, there's going to be a little pop quiz at the end of my talk. What? Uh, don't look in your wallets. Don't go on the net. What, uh, what bill is Alexander Hamilton on? Just keep that in the back of your mind. So uh, back in 1790, uh, Alexander Hamilton got his bank and uh, at the cost of moving the capital to some swamp near Virginia. And uh, no one knows how that happened. It's uh, in the room where it happened. Um, so uh, there's an analogy here somewhere. Uh, if you're using HTTP client and you're the requester, you send requests to the server and you get responses back but you don't know what happened. It's all behind the scenes. Now, uh, if you're like me, you'd probably like to inspect that request, or maybe you would want to modify it in some way, add some headers. Maybe you don't want to issue that request at all. Maybe you want to look at that response and uh, interpret it before it goes back. Uh, perhaps you want to modify it a little bit, tweak it a little bit before you send it back to, to the caller. And in some cases, you'll simply want to replace the response altogether. And for that, you want HTTP interceptors. Hard to say, but easy to use. Okay, let's jump right into one, see the structure of it. We're going to write a logging interceptor. Uh, and it's a class. Hey, that's great. It inter uh, implements an Angular interface. Uh, all of the interfaces that you'll need are in the HTTP client uh, 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 library there at Angular Common HTTP. And, um, uh, oh, yes. Um, so the interface only has one method, uh, and it's called intercept, and it takes a request and this funny thing called an HTTP handler, and it's going to return an observable. Let's take a look at that. There's the request. Then you do your thing with that request. Then you take the request and you handle it. You pass it to the handle method of the next, and you return that. And that is, in fact, an observable of HTTP response. I know it says HTTP event, but 90% of the time, it's a response. All right, so that was the going out part. You, you, you can see that we logged it. We could have done, that's the thing we wanted to do with the request. Um, now uh, that we've done that, we are going to do something. And the, the next handle returned an observable. And so you do need to know a little bit about observables. You know, need to know enough that you're going to pipe something onto the end of it before it wanders on its way. And you, you use your operators. They go there. And in this case, what we're going to do is tap into the response and log it because we're interested in a side effect. We're going to just log it somewhere. Now, you might also be interested in logging errors too because things don't always go right. So TAP has uh, two uh, arguments and the second one can log an error. Now, interceptors are not just classes, they're in injected services. So that means, uh, well, you gotta go provide it. You can't, you can't just throw an ad injector on it, as you'll see for a minute. So you got to provide it, and you got to provide it in a very specific place. You got to provide it uh, at the same injector level uh, where you uh, import the HTTP client module. And for me and many people, that's app module. And you just throw it in there. Uh, you just throw it in there. Uh, and thank you, Siri, for enjoying uh, the show as well. She just interrupted me. Um, so uh, with this, you're using a different kind of providing. You're using an injector symbol. Uh, and there's this funny thing that multi-true. And that's because you're not going to have one injector. You're going to have a lot of them. And so we're not just providing a single service. We're providing an array of services. So let's, uh, let's go do another one and, and note that um, like any service, which an interceptor is, it can take injected dependencies that you can use in your interception. So uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes things take a long time to load and you need a spinner, uh, some kind of indicator that you're busy. So uh, 
you know, it, it sounds simple, but uh, we realize that we've got all these requests throughout our application. They're flying in from everywhere and you don't want to hook each one of them up to a busy indicator. You'd like to have a centralized place to do it. Uh, and when you do that, you can realize that you can have many requests that get launched all at once or in sequence. And uh, so you can't just turn it on. You have to keep track of what you're doing and uh, count them up. And then uh, when you're done, you can't let them all go. So you got to show that busy on the first request and then you got to hide the busy after the last response. And in between, you just got to keep it up there. So that's what we're going to do. And you'd start with a busy component. You can imagine the, the, how it would display. And it's going to use an observable that I've created in my busy service called busy state. And we got to inject it. And when busy state is true, the loading spinner shows up. And then when it goes false, it uh, disappears. All right, on to the interceptor. Starts as a class implementing HTTP interceptors. And uh, now, you know, just like anyone, you, you, Put the uh, service you want to inject right there in the constructor and it gets injected. Uh, well, by the way, there's no provided in, all right? Remember, we can't do that provided in root thing. And um, here is the intercept method, which is you know the shell of it. They all have this for. Let's uh, figure out what message we want to show. If, if the request is a get, we'll show loading. If it's something else, we'll just assume it's saving. And now, we're on the request side now. We just call the busy service increment and bang, the spinner will come up. Um, now we got to sort of take the spinner down when the last one comes through. So we're going to do that in here somewhere inside the pipe. Remember, that's how you manipulate a response. Um, but what one do we, what operator do we choose? The one we want is finalize. And the reason we want finalize and not tap this time is because uh, we want to be able to decrement that. We want to shut that spinner down for whatever terminates the response. So that could be, you know, the uh, response happened. It could be that there was an error. It could be that somebody just unsubscribed without there being an error or um, a, a result. And in all those cases, you want to do it. And finalize is your operator. Of course, you got to remember to provide it. So we go back to app module and we find a place to put it. And I guess we decided that it should go after logging HTTP interceptor. So now that we got two, that raises an interesting question. What's actually going on with all of these interceptors? What's going on? So we said we have a requester at the top here and we have a server at the bottom. And uh, well, you know, in this diagram, we've got three interceptors. So what's going on? Well, the request comes in, it goes into that, uh, you do whatever you do to it, goes into the handle, and it goes on to the next interceptor. Goes in, does whatever you do to it, goes on to the next interceptor. Whatever you did to it, goes to the handle, goes on to the next, and eventually it ends up at the server. And then the server does whatever it wants to do, and uh, it sends it back to the first interceptor, which is coming right out through uh, the, the one that's closest to the server. And it goes through whatever piping you had in mind there, because uh, uh, it's an observable, and you're just extending it. And that pops out, and that goes, pops back up to the next interceptor, which pops to the next interceptor. And eventually, your observable ends up back there at the requester. This is sometimes known as the Russian doll pattern because um, each of the interceptors handles both the request stream going down and the response stream coming back up. So it's like stacked dolls, right? One into the other and all the requests flow down one way and then all the responses bubble back up the other way. Let's give ourselves a, another interceptor here. Um, this is one I actually use called the read-only interceptor. And it's uh, going to be an example of how we interrupt that flow that we just showed. So the problem is this. My app goes into read-only mode from time to time for reasons I don't need to explain. Uh, and while I'm doing that, if I really want to have a read-only mode, I, you know, I should go in there and disable the input controls. But what if I miss one and I have? I need some kind of backup. I don't want a, a save request going to the server. So I'm going to block the put posts and deletes. Uh, although there's some posts because <laughs> they've got these antique uh, servers that are actually gets. So you got to let those through. So you filter those. And there are other kinds of posts that I don't really uh, have to stop. 
uh, maybe they're analytic posts. So I have to filter them a little bit, but basically you get the idea. So let's write it. Again, starts with a class, and we're, this time we're injecting a session service so we can know a little bit about the read-only state, and we're going to have a logger. We probably should have had a logger in our logging interceptor. Here's the shell of our intercept method. Again, request, next, outputs an observable. And I'm going to pick up the read-only state from the session service. And now, if it's not read-only, or if it's one of those things that I said is okay to be uh, sent, even if it's um, uh, a, a post or a put or something like that, well, you know, I'm just going to handle it in the usual way. Otherwise, if it is read-only and I'm supposed to stop it, of course, I'm going to compose an error and I'm going to log it out. But now i got to do something a little different. I'm going to, I'm not going to throw an error. I'm going to return an error observable. And uh, one of the key things to notice here is I am not calling next handle. That's right. I am not going to hand this down, the, the, uh, down to the next doll in the stack dolls. So let's see what that looks like. All right, we have our three. Now we really do have three interceptors. Uh, and they're logging read-only and busy interceptor because that's the way I'm going to set them up, right? So the first one goes to the logging and it gets logged. The next one goes to the read-only interceptor. Oh, but it happens to be a post, right? You can see it's a post at the top. So that gets intercepted and it's an error response that flows up and that flows back to the requester. The busy interceptor never saw it. The server never saw it. Now we love being able to do that kind of thing. And in order to get it to work just like that, it's, it's really in all in how you provide it. So we, we already had uh, the logging interceptor and the busy interceptor, uh, and we know we want to log it, uh, but we don't want to get to the busy. So what are we going to do? Well, the order in the array matters. So we got to move that one up and stick our read only interceptor in there. So the order in which you provide matters. And because that matters, by the way, we're always going to want to have busy last because there's no reason to throw a spinner unless you're actually, actually, actually going to the server. So uh, the best way is not to dump them into uh, app module or uh, don't sprinkle them around in a bunch of modules. The best is to sort of pull it together so you can control the order. And I do that in a barrel. Um, and so I create an array, a provider array of uh, interceptor providers. That's what I call it. And that's where I have the exact same thing I would have done in a module, but I order them here exactly the way I want them. And then I go back to my app model uh, module I'm refactoring here, and I pull out all those guys and I put in my HTTP interceptor providers. And now as I evolve my interceptors, I'm not revisiting app module, which is a good thing. That's another good thing. Let's add a fourth one because uh, our, we're interested in, well, generally in uh, authenticating, uh, but also our lesson here is about how to manipulate the request and the response. So it has the same structure with, you know, we're going to have an authentication service and we're going to use the router. So we inject those uh, and now we're ready to start our intercept method. And that's our shell. So from the auth service, we want to get our access token and we want to prepare our headers here. So we, uh, we set up some nice headers and we just assign those to the request, right? And no. Uh, the request object is immutable. You're not allowed to change it. But it does come with a clone method. And so the clone will make a shallow copy of it. And it also takes an optional um, argument where you can tell it, what it how it should update the uh, request. And so that's where we're going to set the headers that we created there. And also because we're talking coors here and we want cookies to flow back and forth, we can set some other things at the same time, like with credentials. And now we're ready to return the handle. But notice uh, what I'm doing here, because uh, I, I may want to handle errors, but I don't have to jam it all into the intercept method. I can delegate that to another method. Not only is it another method, it's actually not another method, it's an operator. Yes, friends, we're going to create our own RxJS operator. Is that hard to do? No, it's not hard at all. Uh, an operator is simply a function that takes an observable in and puts an observable out. And in our case, for these things, we're going to take that 
that observable of the response in and put one out. All right, well, how, how hard is that to do? It, it's really not hard at all. You just take that source and you pipe onto it and then you go back to your, you know, whatever your level of RxJS skills are and start working that source. So in our case, we're going to catch the error, right? That's the only thing we're going to do. If it's good, it's just going to fly right out of here. It's going to be a pass-through operator. And then we, we do whatever we're going to do. So inside the catch error, if it's a 401, which means you're not authenticated, there's some kind of, you're unauthorized in some sense, then I'm going to pass that on to something that does something about that. And otherwise, I'm going to use that thing we used last time, the throw error. I'm just going to return an error object, and that will pass back up through the operator, the interceptor dolls that we would create what might that error handler for the 401 look like? Well, uh, I'm going to go dig into the headers from the response. And if the token has expired, I'll do one thing. If it's any other cause, I'm going to do something else. Well, if it's expired, there's not much I can do. So I've got that auth service hanging around and I can just sign in again. And when you sign in, um, you know, it uses some uh, off, uh, out of the app uh, sign in mechanism. We don't sign in within the app. We delegate that out, maybe to identity server or something. And so uh, it's going to leave the app. But if for any other reason it's unauthorized, I, I got a problem and I've got to figure out what I'm going to do about it. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to navigate away. That's right. You can, from inside an interceptor, you can navigate and go to some safe place, like wherever you're supposed to go with it. Um, there's some kind of authorization failure. Now, you still have an obligation. Notice we hadn't returned anything at this point. Still have an obligation to return something. Uh, and we know we've handled the error, and we know that whoever is listening for this shouldn't do anything with the result, but they shouldn't fail either. So we're going to return empty, which simply um, the empty observable just completes. And that will unsubscribe or do whatever it is that has to be done downstream, but it won't send them an error and it won't send them a result. So they'll just be able to keep uh, moving. And then, of course, we've got to provide it. But, but where does it go? Where should I put it? Well, I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you to figure out why that's the right place. Over time, you'll be looking at your, your interceptor providers and deciding what's the right order for you. So one last time, we're going to go through the flow. It goes down, it goes to read only, it goes to auth interceptor, busy interceptor, onto the server, back, 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 back. But wait a minute. How did it get to the server? What's in there? What's the mystery in there? Well, it turns out that HTTP client actually has a final interceptor. Yeah, there is exactly one. It's called HTTP backend. You can actually replace it. In fact, the Angular in-memory web API does replace it. But, uh, but that's guaranteed to be the last interceptor, no matter what other interceptors you set up. And that's the one that makes the X XHR call. And so that's what your uh, interceptor gets to, which then goes to the server, comes back here, connects up there, and on you go. All right, it's back to the quiz. Back to the quiz. What bill is Alexander Hamilton on? It turns out he's on the 10. Uh, so uh, uh, you're free to send your $10 to me. Uh, now, uh, one of the things, though, uh, in this time of crisis with $2 trillion uh, in uh, uh, funding, uh, the government has to make it up some way. So um, they're thinking of allowing celebrities to put their faces on. They're bidding it out. So pretty soon we could be seeing Taylor Swift on the 10. And I just think this is a tragedy uh, to compound the existing tragedy. I, I am so disgusted by the idea that we might, um, might sell our currents, our sacred currency out. Uh, and I hope you join me in your sense of disgust. Um, and on that uh, uh, pleasant note, uh, I thank you very much uh, for attending the HTTP Interceptors. <laughs>